Yeah, sounds the same like, yes. uns music. It sounds banging. All right, I started the recording. Don't say anything you don't want recorded. Okay. Um, then I think we are ready to stop. I'm sorry about that music. Um, well, okay, fine. Let's take this away and then we'll move. Uh, this is the Quorum Foundation's Week in the of January 15th. Uh, first up, uh, upcoming and ship releases. Alan? Yeah, uh, just a note to say that um, the ASIC weight refactor PRs are kind of imminent. I've spent a day kind of rebasing after. Uh, some big changes went in, but I'll leave that to Alex to talk about a bit later. Um, but they are really close up. Um, there is around or well, less than 10 files I think I need to refactor in, in core tests. And then um, then there's just kind of admin tasks to be done. But um, we're really close, still really close. I know it's been like another week, um, but I was doing things at the end to mid to end last week. Uh, so. That's all I have. Okay. In terms of the Go Plus patch release, uh, it's still not out. Um, it's been held last week working on uh, planning out. Uh, so I'll try to get to that in a couple of days. Next up. Uh, I think I can give that update. Um, so we had a meeting uh, yesterday uh, to discuss the, discuss the current status. Uh, and we build out a plan for uh, finishing the pieces that are necessary for <coughs> sorry go for us zero point five point zero sentence um, we're also getting closer to one uh, one k nodes and in k nodes we'll see uh, so we found a network configuration that appears to work on Kubernetes for us uh, we've almost done port in sidecar uh, to Kubernetes we're working through a few last kinks and bugs. Um, Considering either like submitting a patch upstream to one of the network systems we're using, or like patching locally, or doing some other weird things, it's not really going to be an issue. But it'll take a couple more days. Uh, yeah, the main things remaining for zero point four zero is uh, again one to ten k nodes uh, running in a cluster um, with like artificial latencies and everything, and like not like hogging old CPU and machine. Uh, artificial latencies. I said that, uh, and multiple versions of IPFS and the DHT right at the same time, so we can test back the compatibility and make sure we don't break the network entirely. Uh, and then finally, we do extract uh, traces and logs from debugging. We want to be able to like, pull down a bunch of traces, <coughs> a very specific machine, so we can analyze in detail and understand what actually happened. Uh, that's that. Content routing. Uh, do we have a role here? No? Okay, so I'll do this one as well. Uh, content routing. Um, there's a lot of design uh, and research work done at the Resident Lab Research Retreat. Um, uh, I don't know if the output of that has actually been posted yet or made available yet, but it should be. Uh, we came up with a bunch of plans for attacking uh, multiple outstanding issues. One is uh, content routing, finding content, the other is content providing. Uh, another one was um, improving the gate performance, and the final one was uh, distributed metrics. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to sentence here. Uh, Will and I were working today on like trying to synthesize a couple of the, the content routing problems into an attack plan. Uh, that is going to be pretty close. Uh, we're going to continue working those few days, um, and then start like well, this is the process of actually breaking this down and attacking it. Um, so, yeah, we're happy where this is going. Uh, this is taking a lot longer than we hoped. Um, but we feel like we are at least more on track now for actually making this happen. Okay, supplement gateway vital. Uh, not a not a big update this week. I update docs. Uh, added uh, our config uh, for some. If someone wants to run subdomain using nginx or other reverse proxy, uh, I've added uh, some docs and made sure our docs related to gate, HTTP gateways in general uh, on the new docs uh, portal uh, are up to date and look uh, decent. 
Uh, I did not start some domain work yet. I'm, I'm finishing some uh, Q4 leftovers, which unexpectedly take more time to land. Uh, but those are bugs that need to be squashed. So maybe next week I'll have more exciting updates. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, moving on, distributed signaling. On pause. Anything else to say? Nope. We, but we should hopefully be booting that up in the next couple of weeks as we finish up the refactor. Okay. IPNS also on pause. Uh, well, actually, no. I think he's in here now. Okay. Uh, he was working a little bit inside on uh, improving how we select. Uh, the IPNS uh, router. Uh, so, like, basically, when, when you publish uh, IPNS records, you should be able to wait. Or sorry, you shouldn't have to wait until all the routers succeed. Uh, if you've enabled IPNS for PubSub, you should be able to just publish it, wait for publish to actually go out, and then just let the use to publish stuff in the background. So, he's been working on this in the background. Um, moving on to ad performance, I don't think there have been any updates here this week, uh, mostly. Uh, we do, um, we have started work on uh, getting Badger 2 into GoFS. We'd like to sort of sneak that in uh, to the next release. It will not be the default. Uh, it will not it will not have migration from Badger 1 to Badger 2. So we will literally be adding it as an additional data store option that you can experiment with choose. Uh, so that people can start testing it out so that hopefully we can make it the default in the next release, which will be 0.6. See so how that goes. We've been trying to make it for quite a while now. Um, so, Uh, next up, migration of multi-hash keys and block store. Uh, on hold from the JavaScript side. Uh, on the Go side, actually, uh, we made some progress here. Uh, we now have uh, a bunch of PRs open for actually like, handling, uh, or sorry, basically handling the world where the block store has moved to uh, multi-hashes instead of CIDs. Uh, we've done this by basically punting all of the work around, like changing all of the higher level interfaces, and instead just focusing on like changing the interface between the, the, uh, the uh, data store and the block store itself. So basically, like, the data store or the block store, I guess, will still be set in CIDs, and then they'll be converted into the hashes down to the data store level and converted back to CIDs to go up. Later on, we're going to start bubbling these changes for the stack. This makes a nice sufficient change. The motivation for this is we are, at least in Go, we're going to have a migration for the next release uh, to the, make sure that we don't have issues with bootstrappers due to changes we've made. Um, but I had kind of like a better reason to have a migration if you're going to have a migration because like that migration is probably going to cause more pain than it fixes. But it's an important migration to have, uh, but running a migration is, is still problematic in certain situations. You have to download it, uh, run it, and there are always like random things can go wrong with that. Um, so I kind of like to have a basically like if you're going to run one migration now, we might as well sort of batch them together because running multiple is, is pretty simple. Um, you know, uh, that's why I think it's kind of nice to get stuff to do. If there's any, if there are any Go humans or people who are somewhat comfortable with Go, uh, or looking up to or up to or something, um, uh, we still actually haven't written the migration. We have all the code now in place, I think. Uh, it would like, enable us to use multi hashes instead of CIDs in the data store. Uh, but the migration of actually moving all of the by CID blocks to by multi hash blocks has not been written. Uh, if you are all interested in making this happen, uh, please ping me. Uh, if you think you can't get to it, uh, I, I know that you know, Hector thinks he can get to it by maybe the end of the month. Um, but if you get to it sooner, that would be great. Uh, okay. Yes, Alan. Uh, just a quick question. Um, so you were mentioning about batching updates or migrations together. What I didn't quite mm -hmm. catch what the other migration was for. Oh, sorry. That... So uh, because we're changing the bootstrappers, uh, sorry, the, not the bootstrappers. Because we are okay. So this release will set the minimum uh, uh, RSA uh, key size to 2048 in Go, uh, which makes us incompatible with most of the original bootstrappers, except for Mars, the very first bootstrapper that has a 4096 bit key, which is a nice change. Um, uh, but it's basically incompatible with all the original ones. Um, there may exist some set of nodes uh, that have a really old config 
only list the original bootstrappers or don't list the DNS and header-based bootstrappers. Uh, this migration adds the DNS and header-based bootstrappers. If uh, you have the old, basically it replaces the old bootstrappers with the new DNS and header-based bootstrappers. Yeah, that's really all it does. Uh, well, that's the primary purpose. The secondary thing that it does is it, uh, because we're migrating from slash IPFS to slash P2P, uh, yeah, this uh, tool also just replaces all the slash IPFSs to slash P2P. Uh, just to be nice to users so they can see this nice, beautiful config that actually makes sense. Uh, and because we love editing users' configs without them knowing. <laughs> that was a joke. You should try not to do that. Uh, yeah. So that's what the current migration is doing. Basically, we have it there just so we don't completely break certain users. On the other hand, like, it might break other users. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, it won't break other users. It might cause some difficulty for other users as they update. Because like, if they aren't able to get to install it and they don't know what works, they're just downloading the migration. I guess say, ah, sorry, can't start. You didn't do that version. Um, they can always side load the rep or they can always basically download the migration separately and run them, but that's the extra step. So basically, we're like, okay, we're gonna we already got the pain. We might as well just like do everything we want to do at once. Okay, sorry for taking so long. Uh, it's swap updates. Uh, Alan has a question. Oh, Alan, yes, sorry. So not so much a question, but um, the interesting point there that I don't know, like something that occurred to me that maybe hasn't occurred to everyone else is that the, the, the migration that's being done is being done on configuration and config is stored in the IPFS repo. So when we migrate, we can also migrate configuration uh, stores as well. Uh, so that, I just wanted to point that out as I mean, it's kind of interesting. Yes. Um, I mean, we have other migrations we probably want to do, but we'll just not actually in this release. Another issue here is like, ideally we'd actually be fetching these migration tools over over uh, IPFS, we don't bundle at least in Go. We don't bundle them with Go IPFS um, because they're kind of big. Because basically, when we build them, we vendor in like, exact versions of things so that they never break. Because uh, we want to make sure these will always build and they never stop uh, But then, of course, that means we don't build it into Go IPFS. So yeah, we have to fetch them. Sorry. Okay. Uh, bits of updates. I am still reviewing uh, Dirk's changes. I'm working through it file by file. Um, I think Dirk has some updates. Uh, yeah. Uh, so in the meantime, I've been implementing the proof of concept changes I've been making in JavaScript for Swap. And specifically, uh, for the time being, I'm just implementing the server side of those changes, meaning we'll be able to respond to requests on the new protocol. So I've been kind of doing that in pieces, and it's now ready for uh, for review. Um, so yeah, I'd love to love to get some reviews on that. Alan, that's a that's a yes. I have I, I just yeah, I just pressed the button to re-request a review because I was already okay. there, and I don't think I got notified. That it was ready, but um, yeah, when I when I get a second, like this week is super hectic um, with with stuff, but um, I will as soon as I can. Have a look. Okay, thanks, Alan. Um, so just while I'm have the microphone, um, with Stephen, with respect to the test ground uh, stuff, mm -hmm. uh, so I was looking like I I'm not able to write any of the test plans. Uh, mm -hmm. in and I'm not exactly sure how that relates to Kubernetes. Is, is all the Docker stuff going to work? Uh, the Docker set stuff should still work. Um, I can test the latest master on my machine. Um, it may be, uh, I may have to like, you want to book a time to sit down and pair on this? Yeah, because it could be just something that's different on my machine than your machine. Yeah. We haven't really tested a lot of like, okay, tear everything down, go from zero, and like test everything from the place that it's starting in. Unfortunately, we've accumulated a couple of manual steps that should not be manual. Uh, so, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. That's uh, nice. Message, yeah, let's be on Slack and we'll find a time to work through this. I made it myself. There we go. Uh, isn't it great? I guess we'll start with JSFS. Uh, yeah, still going, uh, unfortunately. Really close to finishing. Uh, like I said uh, at the start, there's I think less than 10, um, 10 files of tests that just need to be re rejigged a little bit. 
um, and I have been slowly working through them. I spent today uh, just rebasing uh, stuff that's there, uh, which took a little while because what's gone in has touched a lot of the things that I've also touched. So I had to do it carefully. Um, but yeah, uh, getting there, getting there with help from Jacob as well, from um, getting getting Libp to be in. Um, but we're we're really really close, um, and I just need a, like a couple more days to um, to get everything sorted. Well, this is an eagerly awaited change. Um, Jason, to be. Yeah, it is uh, in the same boat. It's close to being done. Didn't have a lot of time last week to work on it, uh, but should have plenty of time to work on it this week. We're just fixing a couple miscellaneous bugs, tidying up some docs. And then I think once everything looks good in JSIPFS, and hopefully we'll do an, uh, an official RC of that this week. Um, yeah, and then hopefully get that out the door in the next week or two. So. Yay! Okay. Uh, Unix FS 1.5. Seen exciting what's going on there. Shipped it! Shipped it! Shipped Wait, it! Completely I mean, we'll merged it, right? Merged <laughs> it. Merged it. Once, uh, yeah. It will be in the next release of JSIP. Uh, that is the um, addition of modes and M times uh, to uh, like normal imports and MFS and all that kind of stuff, along with uh, chmod and touch commands to, to manipulate this data. Uh, yeah, super happy. Um, big thanks to everyone who helped out, uh, Peter especially for kind of sanity checking all the um, spec work as well. And yeah, it's been amazing. Uh, cool. Yeah, so that's really good. I'm really happy. Uh, can people still hear me? Yes. Okay, because my screen my screen is not frozen, so I can't do anything. Uh, I can still talk. Um, Okay, that's great. Uh, before we release that, can we make sure to add an interrupt test and then make sure it doesn't, it still works with cruisers and JavaScript and go? They're all in the interface um, testing suite oh, already. Excellent. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, so, next up um, stream, er, uh, stream content based chunking research and improvements. Yes, uh, so I actually haven't had a chance to really get very much done last week. Uh, I rejiggled my uh, order of operations, so to speak, on the issue and basically tracking it, uh, using it as the tracker of the, of the wider uh, plan of how this work is done. Uh, I should have leveled enough on go in the next like couple of days. I already uh, had Kuba help me with uh, a couple of questions, and uh, should have the preliminary document shipped with this is what we are doing, this is what we are doing it, and this is the type of data that we're trying to pull out of the various data sets that are already assembled. I just need to document them uh, and put them on IPFS and also on my web server where they currently reside. Uh, so a lot of progress, it's basically from multiple sites is coming together and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like three days behind, but uh, I should be able to make up this time. So that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, good to hear. Um, I'll take a look at that issue. Uh, questions. We had two questions that I cannot read because I uh, can't use my computer. Could someone please read them? I had a question. Um, so, seeing as I've just hogged the mic, I'll just start. Uh, and I just had an idea whilst we were talking about it. Would it be a good idea to have like a, a separate? I mean, there will be information on the release notes for the next JSIPFS, but would it be a good idea to do like an extended blog post on UNIXFS 1.5 and what new new things are available and why why we did it, what what why it's important, um, and what it enables you to do? Um, yes, I'm, I'm sort of yes. Is this a volunteer? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I will do it. Okay. I was going to say, if Alex doesn't want to do it, then I'm, I'd be happy to do it because I'm just—I don't, don't want to just suggest work for him. But um, but I think that would be rad if if we got a, a blog post on it. That's yeah, awesome. No awesome. Okay, uh, Dirk. Oh, sorry, Alan, you another? No, no. I was just going to say there's another question from Dirk. If you want to read yep. it out. 
I, I can't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering which uh, of the content review improvements that you guys do, uh, need to be done before 0.5 is released. We have a list uh, that we are currently editing. Uh, we should get out hopefully later this week. Um, uh, basically, uh, we already have some pieces done, but like uh, not including those behind NAS and the DHC. Um, uh, Adin is currently working on uh, fixes to like our query logic. Uh, but we're going like, <laughs> to uh, clearly lay out the exact like, requirements of that. Um, and all the need to be done. Um, then we have some other improvements around uh, like, basically keeping the routing table up to date and fresh and like, correct and deal with the fact like, we can't, our nodes can't be connected to each other all the time. Uh, so it's especially a problem like, if most of the nodes in the network are clients, um, uh, then like, the, the servers or the, the DC servers will end up getting overloaded with clients. So we'll start disconnecting clients. So that, like, in order for the networks to work, the clients have to like, not then like, forget their entire routing table. They need to like, still keep this information, still be able to action it across. Um, yeah, so we're still, still trying to prioritize and make sure they figure out what goes into like before zero point zero and what goes into and after zero point zero with the bucket. <coughs> um, yeah, but those are the general ideas. Um, I mean, would it be accurate to define like uh, if we see the improvements in content routing performance from test ground tests that we hope to see that? You know that that is yes. the necessary space, and you know if it needs more than that, then we'll do more than that. If we yes. get MVP version and the test ground tests say go, we go. Yeah, that's basically it. Where, yes, so the, the the very first step here is basically like get well, uh, get a thousand, ten thousand nodes uh, in test ground, uh, reproduce the current network problems in test ground, show that like, these declarations take ages or don't complete, um, uh, then start testing out our patches in test ground. Uh, see what we actually need to do uh, to make the tests or the, the queries complete within the reasonable amount of time. At the moment, like we're shooting for an absolute worst case scenario of a release in 30 seconds, um, because like it's still terrible, um, but it's like even really better than what we have right now. Uh, and we know we can do a lot better than that, but we want to get a release out that's better. And then once that's better, then we can start working on improving, you know, start improving the query logic. Uh, so, that's, so, so, so the summary, I guess, is that the baseline is that we do not make it worse, that we do not break content discovery entirely, and uh, that <coughs> kind of like it's, the baseline. It's a little bit. It's a little bit more than that. So, with uh, BitSwap, the the goal is to like, not make it worse. So, like, that's why we still need to test the, the current BitSwap patches and test ground uh, with variable latencies and multiple, like with variable bandwidth constraints and stuff like that. Um, and there, we need to make sure we don't have regressions. Yeah, although. Like, I expect to see a lot of significant improvements because we've seen them in other places. Um, with with uh, content routing, we know, we need to make it better because at the moment, like, it just doesn't complete. <laughs> um, and like, basically, content routing just like doesn't work when it takes ages, uh, and like we can't release without it actually working. Okay, thanks. The, the main reason we need to reproduce the current system in test ground is to make sure test ground is actually working and that our tests actually work. Otherwise, like, if we can show that, hey, test ground shows that our, our code is fast, doesn't mean anything unless we can show that we're actually testing the right thing. Okay, any other questions? Uh, there are no parking. hands raised, so I okay. guess no. Thank you. Uh, parking lot. Anything else? I think that's it for the week. OK, then. Awesome. Uh, see you all around. Yeah, don't forget to put your updates at the bottom of the notes. Uh, bye. See you next week. Bye.